Sea stars were once common in Oregon's tide pools. These days, they're nearly extinct. Around 2013, a mysterious illness called sea star wasting disease began killing off these colorful creatures. Steve Rumrill, head of the shellfish program with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, says as many as six billion may have died. By some accountings, this could be the largest marine disease event in, uh, in history. Sea stars can be found from Alaska to Mexico. Sunflower sea stars, which can grow up to three feet wide with as many as 24 arms, were among the hardest hit, with nearly all off the Oregon's coast dying from the disease. 95% of those individuals have been decimated and lost, so very heavy, heavy hits there on that species. Experts still aren't totally sure how the disease works. Two leading theories are that it's a waterborne virus passed between individuals, or that microbial changes could have caused a loss of oxygen to the animals. Either way, the results were gruesome. But sea stars have the ability to, um, uh, through an autoimmune uh, response, to be able to cast off damaged parts of their bodies. And so they would cast off a ray or just dissolve their whole body. Uh, in essence, people have described it as melt away. Scientists haven't found a direct link to climate change, but the onset of the disease happened at the same time as a severe marine heat wave in the Pacific, which Rumrill said is unlikely to just be a coincidence. We think that all, that all of these things are related to a changing ocean conditions associated with global climate change. The loss of sunflower sea stars has had ripple effects in the marine ecosystem. They mostly feed on sea urchins, who in turn feed on seaweed and kelp. Without the sea stars, things have grown out of balance. The decline in sunflower sea stars has, has probably been um, related to the increase in, in sea urchins and a decline in kelp and seaweeds. And Oregon's kelp forests are important for all kinds of creatures, from tiny plankton to marine mammals who feed on the fish that rely on kelp. Rumrill has now co-authored a recovery plan calling for increased monitoring and research. Some biologists in Washington have begun raising sea stars in labs to help repopulate the species in the wild. And federal regulators are set to decide in January if the animals should be listed under the Endangered Species Act, which Rumrill said he hopes would bring new attention and possibly funding to the plight of sea stars. I hope that, that we can get over this and the sea stars can come back, uh, but uh, it, it looks pretty, pretty bleak for this species. Kale Williams, KGW News. Still